Well, meanwhile, President Trump's commission investigating the allegations of voter fraud. Well, it's asking states to give the federal government some sensitive voter information. And that's sparking a major backlash from many of those states. So far, more than 20 are refusing to fully cooperate with the request. The feds want voters' names, addresses, criminal records, even parts of Social Security numbers, and in some cases, how they voted. So what does this mean for the panel's work? Betsy Woodworth is a political reporter for the Daily Beast and joins us now. Uh, Betsy, first of all, I've reported here at Fox News uh, for years on voter fraud cases, and we got some doozies, and we're going to get to that in a minute. But this effort by the Trump administration is extremely controversial, to say the least. Right, exactly. One of the big concerns is from cybersecurity experts and some of these secretaries of state who worry that putting all that sensitive information in one place would make it a top target for hackers trying to get information about American social security numbers, political proclivities, etc. Now, others say those concerns are overblown, but it's certainly something that's present in the mind of secretaries of state who are worried about cooperating with the White House on this particular issue. Well, others, you know, say that's really a state's right issue. You know, this, we have a system in this country where the localities and the states run the elections, not, you know, the federal government. And some state officials have told me they're worried that this is an encroachment by the feds into, you know, what they do. Exactly. Now, that said, this, the request is coming from a presidential commission. It doesn't have the ability to issue subpoenas. The members of the commission aren't going to, are, it's extremely unlikely they would sue any of these states to try to get these records. To my knowledge, they haven't asserted that the federal government has a right to seize this information. So it's more this commission saying, hey, will you play ball with us? Will you cooperate and help us do this research? If they're not trying to force or necessarily coerce the states into cooperating. That said, of course, President Trump seems willing to to sort of use his bully pulpit to try to push these states to get on board. He tweeted uh, recently that, he's, that some of the states who weren't cooperating might have something to hide. None of the secretaries of state have indicated they're trying to hide anything, but the president's clearly going to do what he can to use his platform to try to encourage states to cooperate. Well, I mean, he's been doing that. I mean, he tweeted out right at the election that, uh, you know, the millions of illegal votes, so there's no evidence of that. And you know what, what critics say? They say this is an attempt at voter suppression that voter fraud, although it does exist, is not widespread or systemic. Yet Chris uh, Kobach, who's the uh, chairman of this uh, commission, the former secretary of state of Kansas, was very involved with these issues. You know, he says it's a vital issue to investigate. Right, and Kobach is a very controversial figure. He has a lot of support among conservatives, a lot of support on the right. He's also quite influential in the thinking of many of Trump insiders when it comes to the immigration question, particularly on voting as well. He's been very vocal about the voter fraud issue. For the most part, though, the preponderance of the evidence shows that there's not evidence any recent American election had its outcome changed because of voter fraud. For the most, for the yeah. most part, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I'm just like, go ahead. I'm jumping yeah, yeah, ahead yeah. on the questions. Go ahead. For the most part, the larger concern that folks, especially in the civil liberties and uh, civil rights community have, is that this commission could lead to efforts to push for some sort of legislation that would make it harder for people to legally vote. Or the, the term they use is that the voter rolls could be, could be purged. But we haven't gotten to that point yet. This commission is just doing research right now. It's going to be working on it for a year. I think people saying that this is you know, a sign of some sort of impending voter suppression probably should wait, see what the commission finds, and see what they recommend. Yeah, the Brandon Center for Justice at NYU uh, is certainly troubled by this. Let me give you some cases. Uh, does voter fraud happen? Yes. I mean, how widespread is it? Uh, let me show you Pasco Parker. Mr. Parker voted three times. You know, you can vote for three times in this country. In 2012, he was convicted of voting in Tennessee in person. He voted by absentee ballot in Florida and also in North Carolina. Another guy did it 13 times, drove from Wisconsin down to Indiana to vote in person. That, that was another case. And here's something that I found a number of years ago in Troy, New York, where the politicians uh, were accused of taking absentee ballots and filling them out themselves to steal elections. That's how, that's how they could do it, folks, apparently. Here's what some voters told me. So you didn't write that? I did not. You didn't cast a ballot? I did not. Did you vote? No. But they have your vote at the Board of Elections. They do. She and other voters told us their ballots were faked and someone else voted in their names. Did you fill out an absentee ballot application? Nope, I didn't fill out any of those. So your vote was a fraud? It was. So it does happen, but bottom line, how widespread is it? 
Not very. There's, there's just no evidence that it's changed the outcome of any elections. Obviously, the ballot box is incredibly important. Voter fraud is a crime. It should be prosecuted. If anything, these, these conversations and this excellent reporting that you've done could be used as evidence that the system actually works, that people are, are looking to track down and enforce the voting laws. Another concern, of course, is this issue of people who are registered to vote in multiple states. And that's something that actually is decently widespread. But the fact that people are registered to vote in two states doesn't mean they're doing that they are actually voting in both of those states on every election day. In fact, many of the president's senior advisors, including Steve Bannon, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, have been registered to vote in two states at the same time, perhaps because they lived in California, then moved to New York, forgot to unregister in the state that they used to live in. That itself is fairly widespread. And then the challenge becomes, how do you eliminate those redundant voter registrations without accidentally taking people off the voter rolls when they have the legal right to be there? And this is really a value question. And the question is, are we more concerned about people voting illegally, people voting who shouldn't be able to, or conversely, are we more concerned that people who do have the legal right to vote will lose that right? That's a balancing act, and it's up to lawmakers and voters to figure out how to handle these issues. Well, the right to vote in our country is sacrosanct. That is one thing that we're celebrating this weekend over July 4th. And by the way, there is an effort to try and weed out those double registered or triple registered people. It's called the Interstate Comp a Cross Check, and it was started in Kansas by Chris Kobach, where they have a bunch of states checked, but guess what? Not every state in the nation is part of that. Uh, Betsy, good to see you, and we'll see how this goes when the uh, panel has its first meeting in a few weeks. Likewise, thanks. Take care.